Comparative advantage. So by definition, it's when a country, a nation, is able to produce at a lower opportunity cost. That would be the country's comparative advantage. For example, let's look at two goods, apples and oranges. Here we can draw a graph to represent a country's ability to produce apples and oranges. On the x-axis, we can put apples measured in tons of apples, zero, our point of origin. And on the y-axis, we can put oranges also measured in tons. <clears throat> so now we can look at one example. Let's call this the United States. The U.S. could produce zero apples and 400 oranges. We can call this point A. The U.S. could also produce 400 apples and 200 oranges. We can call this point B. Or the U.S. could produce 800 apples and zero oranges. We can call this point, point C. And now we can draw what we call a budget constraint for the United States, which means that the United States would like, if it could, to produce somewhere beyond this curve, although it cannot because it would be impossible without additional resources. They could produce within this curve, but why would they? That would be considered inefficient. So they have the option of producing at either point A, point B, point C, or anywhere along the constraint, as this would be seen as efficient based on the resources that the U.S. has. So chances are that the United States is going to produce at point B a combination of apples and oranges. We can now use the information and put that on a chart. United States. Now we can put here um, apples measured in tons, oranges also measured in tons, and we're going to focus on point B. And point B on the x-axis, apples, is 400. And point B on the y-axis, oranges, is 200. So now we want to know exactly what is the country, in this case the United States, what is their opportunity cost of one apple to one orange? So for that, we need to know how to calculate the U.S.'s opportunity cost. We can then also do the same thing here and put here apples. That's our x-axis, and oranges, which represents our y-axis. Now we could see that opportunity cost is a function of what you will sacrifice over what you will gain. So in the case of the United States, if we were looking at producing apples, the U.S. will sacrifice oranges. And that would mean 200, what you will sacrifice, over what you will gain, apples, of 400. And this gives us one half of oranges. So now we can say that the United States, if it chooses to produce one more apple, it's going to give up our printing cost, half of production of an orange. Produce one more apple, U.S. must give up half of production of an orange. Now for the orange category, opportunity cost, 
if the U.S. would focus on oranges, it's going to sacrifice apples. The apples would be 400 on the numerator. What they're going to gain would be oranges at 200. 400 over 200 gives us two apples. So if the U.S. were to focus on producing oranges, it's going to give up two apples. So for every one orange the U.S. produce, it's going to give up on producing two apples. So it seems as if that this has a higher opportunity cost than this when producing apples. So it seems as if that the United States would be better off in producing apples. In producing apples and apples only. So we would say that point C might be the better point in terms of producing at a comparative advantage.